Hi, and welcome to Module 1, Unit 2. This unit is focused on answering the question of what is qualitative research. Um, we expect that at the end of this unit, you'll be able to identify some definitional terms in qualitative research, uh, distinguish some common qualitative paradigmatic approaches, different paradigm, uh, explain the advantages and limitations of qualitative data, and describe how qualitative research can be useful for a health equity agenda. So I want to talk, start out with some definitions. This is really useful to understanding and discerning qualitative from quantitative, which was the focus of the last unit. So when we talk about epistemology, this is the theory of knowledge. It's the assumptions and beliefs that we have about the nature of knowledge. So how do we know things? How do we know the world? What is the relationship between the knower and the known? Ontology is different from epistemology in that it has concerns about the philosophical, the philosophy of existence and the assumptions and the beliefs that we hold about the nature of being and, and existence. Um, so epistemology and ontology can be useful in discerning, again, qualitative from quantitative. A paradigm, which you'll talk, we'll talk about in these modules, uh, really refers to models or frameworks that are derived from a worldview or a belief about a, uh, or a belief system about the nature of knowledge and existence. So paradigms are shared by a scientific community and guide a community of researchers to act with regard to inquiry. So we can have a more quantitative kind of paradigm that, has, that reflects certain worldview or belief systems or a more qualitative or a mixed. Uh, and methodology is something you should be learning a lot about in your classes are really the methods that we employ to gain knowledge about the world. Um, and in the last module, we talked about qualitative methods, and we'll talk about that a little bit today. I also just want to discern two things that you'll hear in these modules. The first is just what is a theory? A theory is a set of general propositions that help explain, predict, and interpret a phenomena. Um, when we use the word theory in qualitative research, you'll hear us talking about grounded theory, kinds of qualitative research that actually, qualitative research that can actually build theory. A construct uh, is a theoretical creation that are based on observations, which can't be seen either directly or indirectly. So when we have a construct, uh, th this is a uh, lower level thinking than a theory. We're usually trying to explore, or unpack, or build an understanding about a particular construct. So this could be something like social capital as a construct. What does that mean? How do we know what social capital is? So we did that because I think it's useful when we're trying to discern these different paradigmatic research approaches, quantitative from qualitative. And I wanted to take a minute to just characterize these a little bit more. So when we think about quantitative research as compared to qualitative, a quantitative research comes from a more positivist paradigm, um, that knowledge is out there and if we structure our research just so, we can produce that knowledge where qualitative emerges from a different paradigm that is more interpretive, um, that it doesn't presume that there is one knowledge out there, that people really socially construct their experiences. But if we position our research in such a way, we can better understand, we can kind of make meaning about how people socially construct their reality. And so the reasoning in quantitative is more deductive, it's, very, it's more top-down, it's more controlled, whereas qualitative is inductive, more flexible and adaptive, as you heard in the last module. As such, quantitative can be really good for testing hypotheses. Qualitative research is not good for testing hypotheses, it's good for generating hypotheses that then may be tested by quantitatively. When we think about Quantitative research, we're usually accepting or rejecting a hypothesis, whereas in qualitative, we're trying to produce a deeper understanding uh, of a phenomena, or in some cases, build theory around something that we don't really know. So methods that we use in quantitative uh, tend to be rigorous and standardized, like the randomized control trial, or in qualitative, they tend to be flexible and adaptive, like ethnography, or photo voice, or observation, or focus group. When we think about re of validity, and we'll have some modules just on uh, issues of validity because they're really important to qualitative, 
when we think about validity and quantity of research, uh, we believe that we can establish a validity statistic because truth is objective and universal and it's important to show how valid something is. Where in quantitative, we have this idea that truth is more subjective and socially constructed. So we're more interested in whether our findings are trustworthy from the uh, groups of people who experience the phenomena of interest rather than whether it's aligned with a particular uh, statistical procedure to test for validity. So I want to compare a couple of research paradigms. Uh, qualitative research is very diverse. Um, and these, so these are just a couple of kinds of qualitative research. And I wanted to characterize how these different research paradigms think about the social world, how, what kinds of evidence they use, and what kind of methods. So in positivist or post-positivist paradigm, um, this is a quantitative research paradigm. Uh, the researcher is independent of the research, and the idea is that the social world is observable and that we can be objective about what we observe and produce uh, meaning from it. Um, the sources of evidence, so the kinds of knowledge that we want to identify, um, uh, come from scientific processes, and we tend to think about them ideally as context-free. So in quantitative research, again, this is through structured measurement. So to distinguish that, this is the, the column on the far left from the columns on the uh, far right. Qualitative uh, can be, again, very diverse, but we tend to think that the social world is in an interpretivist or constructionist uh, paradigm constructed of symbolic meanings that people make meaning and we can observe people through their acts, their interaction, and language, and that those meanings are derived from their social context. So instead of being context-free, we actually welcome and embrace the context because it's important for us to understand the phenomena. Um, so in, in an interpretivist kind of paradigm, you might use interviews or focus groups or observations to help us understand that context. In a critical uh, paradigm, like a feminist paradigm or a critical race theory paradigm, you're really interested in uh, the fact that the social world is governed by power relationships that influence acts and perceptions, and that power, control, and contextual factors can be identified in personal accounts. So we might have a feminist lens to look at diaries, to look for power relationships. Um, in a critical uh, feminist paradigm. In a more participatory paradigm, and this is the kind of research that I do, the community-based participatory research, we tend to think that the social world is co-created, it's based on and governed by reality, and the social and historical context is really important. So the kinds of evidence that we want to produce are locally co-constructed, um, and we might use various methods um, in this, and they would would be iterative and they would be really driven and governed by the people who experience the phenomena of interest in a participatory framework. So just to go back to these classic qualitative um, methods, there are lots of methods in qualitative research that can be employed um, depending on what paradigm you come to your research with. So an interview and a focus group might be useful for some kinds of paradigmatic lenses where more flexible maybe observation or personal narratives might be more appropriate for others. So I want to talk just a little bit about why qualitative research is so useful for a critical health equity research agenda. And this is a, an image that Linda A. Murray sometimes includes in her slides, which suggests that that quality of research is really useful for unpacking those isms that are important to understand health inequities, that it is these isms that produce social inequalities and, and, and social inequities uh, and health inequities, and yet we tend to take more quantitative approaches um, and narrow in on particular risk factors or particular variables in trying to understand something that is so complicated and so hard to understand. So quality of research can be very useful in trying to understand things that people experience that are unjust, that are unfair and unavoidable. And so I thought I'd take a minute to remind listeners of the difference between those health disparities, which are differences in health outcome experienced by groups of people, um, but 
health disparities have no explicit cause, claim to a cause, and have no clear policy implications. They're just differences. Whereas health inequities are differences that are avoidable, unfair, and unjust, and they are created and caused by social and economic and political context because people of different groups, so race, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, ability, um, income, class, educational level, um, actually have different experiences because of the way the system produces different experiences based on your social identity. So these are issues related to power and privilege and prestige. These have clear policy implications because policies are put in place to stratify experiences for people so that some people are unfairly advantaged or some people are unfairly disadvantaged and we see that in their overall health outcomes. So this slide helps us pull this apart a little bit more to, to highlight um, issues of equity and it can be useful in just becoming familiar with qualitative research. So on the far left of the slide, we think about equality. We think about equal distribution of resources. So these three individuals have the same resources uh, given to them um, so that they can participate uh, in watching the baseball game. Um, in the middle, the resources are distributed in a more equitable way, attending to how people came to the game and the fact that they are, came to the game at different levels with different kinds of advantage. Whereas on the far right, we're interested in issues of justice, and that is thinking about those structures that are put in place that provide different experiences for different people and working together to dismantle these structures. So setting the stage for a critical health equity research agenda can be helpful in understanding how qualitative can be useful because qualitative is useful at the complex, nuanced experiences that people have. And with a social justice uh, discipline like public health, qualitative can really be central to accomplish some of our aims. So qualitative research has some really important limitations that everyone should be aware of. Uh, qualitative research is not generalizable, and that's, that's an important thing. We talk a lot about the importance of our research being generalizable. It is uh, very useful at understanding a, a particular phenomenon, a particular context. Uh, we tend to have a very small N in qualitative because it's very labor intensive. It's very time consuming. Um, and there's lots of opportunity for researcher bias in qualitative research. We have lots of ways of controlling for researcher bias, and there's lots of ways in which a researcher is welcome into the research itself, and bias is less relevant uh, in qualitative than in quantitative. But qualitative makes up for some of the things that quantitative uh, is limited in. So, so quantitative is not good at understanding contextual detail needed to interpret findings. Like I said before, we like our research in quantitative to be context-free. Qualitative research uh, typically relies on predetermined ranges of responses that might not reflect how people really experience a phenomena and certainly might not reflect local understanding of a phenomena. Quantitative research typically has a predetermined theory that may not be right, it may not be applicable, which is why qualitative research can actually generate those hypotheses. And a last uh, slide to talk about rigor because this is important to think about and it's important to engage in rigorous qualitative research. But I want to distinguish, when we're talking about the quality of our research and qualitative research and its rigor, we're more interested in trustworthiness than validity and reliability. So in traditional quantitative research with a more positivist um, orientation, positivist paradigm, we are very, it's very important for us to have high validity and high reliability and attend to issues of generalizability and external validity. Whereas in qualitative, it's important to us that our research is trustworthy, that it incorporates concepts of confirmability or auditability, that it's dependable and credible, and that it fits uh, the phenomena that we're interested in exploring, which is why in qualitative res research, when we test for validi validity, we do it in ways in which we share our emerging findings with members who've experienced the phenomena of interest. So we do that through member checking to test uh, whether our findings make sense um, and are reliable um, to the population, again, who experiences that. 
So that's the end of Module 1, Unit 2, and please go from here to the quiz. Thank you.